Hi, and welcome along to the All Guns Blazing podcast, which we are doing today at the Box Park here in Wembley. Um, this is where we're going to be taking in the game this weekend as well. And I've got my man DT here, and he was just reminding me, actually, I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind that this is the first time we've done a face-to-face, -face, well, not exactly face-to-face, I'm looking that directly, you know, coronavirus and that, but podcast since the whole lockdown began. Yeah. Well, yeah. how long's that been? About five months. It's been a wonderful it's five been like months. Five months. It's been amazing. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Why? So I had to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're funny. <laughs> you know you love me, man. You know you, 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 you that's why he's got his big smile on his face. He's happy to see me in person. It's because I just had lunch. <laughs> but um yeah, well, podcasts in the same place. So that's that's good. Um and of course it's the FA Cup final. Yes. FA Cup final. That's week. why we're here down there in Wembley, FA yeah. Cup final. And um, you, know, you wouldn't have said that five months ago either, would you? I don't know. Not with Arsenal. We seem to have a that's habit of getting to finals. No, that's what I'm saying. But I did you think we would no, make it all the way? This season, you're probably thinking no, because we were an absolute shambles. And then when the semi-final draw was made, you were definitely like, nah. It's been a nice run. Been to a couple of nice grounds. Portsmouth was lovely. But, you know, bye-bye. <laughs> and we're here. Um, before we get into the FA Cup, because this is a, obviously no, this is what we're talking about today, <laughs> FA Cup special, the guys from 888 Sport have sent us through this one. Now, let's get your view on this. Like, it used to be that he'd come on, he'd be a little bit nervous, a bit shy, but now he's actually running games, like, alongside De Bruyne. He's been just ridiculous. Do you think next season? Um, you, is it going to be his season? Is I mean, Foden going to actually play? Foden's going to score 20 goals next season. Put it, put that on the table now. And I honestly believe, as good as all these players are, and some of them are going to be end up at the top of the game, I think Phil Foden will go further than any of them. I think, he, honestly, he has a ridiculous level. We've got a couple at Arsenal that have been doing really well. I think Saka has been an unbelievable talent, 18 years old. Loads of assists. He, he, he plays like he's about 25, 26. He plays like a senior player. I, I, know, I, I, I can't really believe for such a kid. I want him at City. Yeah. <laughs> just, huh? I just want him at City. He's quality soccer. Do you reckon? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's absolutely quality. Yeah. yeah. Given that he's 18 as well, and he's that, but he's got that much ability already. And the, I mean, he's got a few assists this season already, yeah, yeah. hasn't he? he got double would, figures assists. Double figures yeah, assists. Yeah, that's ridiculous for an 18 year old. Um. Best young player. Oh, it's going to cause debate, isn't it? Um, I want to just... Greenwood? Quality. He's quality. Um, so is, um, you know, the lad at Man City. I forgot his name now. Foden. Foden. Yeah, he's quality. Um, Saka, Martinelli. People will even throw in the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold. But I no, would say... He's not, he's not in his it experience. Now. Yeah. He's, We're on you about can't have him emerging in talent. Um, I think the future for England Mason looks Mount, bright. Mason Mount, Chelsea's yeah. guy. The future for England looks bright, mm. especially if Saka does decide to pick England over Nigeria because mm. he has got a decision to make. Um, and yeah, I suppose it, what, what side of the fence you sit on, really, and what team you support, we're going to say Martinelli and Saka. Man United fans will say Greenwood and Chelsea fans will say Mount and there ain't no Man City fans to say Foden, but... Um, <laughs> All right, be completely you know, unbiased now. No, no, no. Who well, wins well, it? It's tough. Well, you know what? The one thing I unbiased. think that we can agree on, that's your show with troops. Or is whatever <laughs> it, you know what I mean? So you worry about that there. But I think the biggest disappointment this season is probably Callum Hudson-Odoi. Yep, yeah, you it's know, true. He had that whole transfer stuff that was going on and Bayern Munich. Mm. And we know what quality he's got. We've seen it firsthand when we went for that pre-season tour in Ireland and he gave better yeah, yeah, yeah. torrid time. But since he got that new contract, huge contract as well, mm. just fallen hasn't, off, isn't he? Just fallen off. Yeah. And it's, I know he's had an injury because he had his, I think it was an Achilles injury and it's difficult, but he just... Remember he had that old rape charge hanging over his head as well. He got off with it. Yeah. But even those things are not good for your, you know, not he was, listen, remember he's 100% innocent. Yeah. But what I'm saying, it's not good to have that hanging over you as well. He's had a lot no, of issues this season, is not he? For a young boy that, you know, yeah. you, you want to concentrate on playing football. Yeah. So, you know, maybe next year could be a chance for him to, you know, really establish mm. himself. But I feel that those other names that we've mentioned are clear of him now. Yeah. You know, because they've been performing in the Premier League this season. Martinelli, yeah. I'm gutted about because he got injured. Mm. His record before lockdown was absolutely brilliant, brilliant. along with the likes of Mason Greenwood. It was mm. near enough identical. Um, Saka, double, double figures for assists mm. in the Premier League at 18. 
unbelievable. It speaks for itself. Such a mature you know? player as well. And Phil Foden, I think that he's going to be taking yeah, over brilliant. from David Silva now. I think that he, he's if still, he, if he's he was wrong. playing week in, week out, I mean, that's the thing. You know? I mean, mm. since the lockdown especially, I think Greenwood's caught the eye because he's been playing week in, week out. He has yeah. been scoring goals as well. But I think it's Martinelli had been fit and have been playing regularly as well. Mm. You know, it's, it's a hard one to say who's better, but I suppose you've got to go Greenwood right now mm -hmm. just for the fact that he's been banging in those goals recently. Yeah, yeah. But I just, you know, I think Saka is a talented in his own way and I also mm -hmm. think Martinelli is as well. But, yeah. And Foden's, he's, he's a super like player. I said, let's just enjoy the young talent that's out there in the yeah. Premier League at the moment. And if, you know, you, you, know, you like me and yourself English and you look mm. at the national team, you think to yourself, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it's good players coming. In. And we yeah. might actually have an Arsenal player in the England national side. <laughs> maybe. Which we haven't had for a while. Well, you can also look on it and say, maybe Willock, if he has a big season next year, could he be knocking on the door? Possibly, but he really needs to step up. Mm. He needs to go on to the kind of level where Mason Mount is now as mm. a regular in terms of the midfield area. So I think those names we've mentioned are the main ones mm. that have really kind of burst on the scene and shown what they're about this season. But they've got to do it next year as well. Mm. Right. Well, listen, it's the, all about the big one. The FA Cup final. Yep. Arsenal taking on Chelsea. Before we get to that, let's just remember how we kind of got there. Um, first game, I was all the way back, Leeds. Leeds United. January. 1-0 scoreline, the same as when we played them the famous Thierry Henry goal. Yeah, Reese Nelson. Yeah, Reese yeah. Nelson. And we actually didn't play that we great. We didn't play that great that night, Especially man. I remember, half. yeah, I remember yeah. They, they had more second possession half, than us. Second half, we actually played really well. Yeah, but, but if you remember half, the first half, they had more possession. Oh, they were they had chances. Us. Socrates was right back. Yeah. Yeah, we was... You can see why Leeds are in the Premier League. Yeah, they were a good the side. the performances that they put on. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was, a, that was a big one to win. Yeah. Big game. Then, then the next one after that is Bournemouth, I think. Remember that, Bournemouth away. God. Man, yeah, yeah, that was good, man. I remember we back. had the whole end. Yes. Because yeah, normally they put you in the corner, don't they? Yeah, we yeah, had the yeah, whole yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that was quite an easy game. I, I think we were like 2 0 up after Until about. the last minute when they got a goal and then yeah, yeah. it went all funny for yeah. about five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Remember Socrates banged one in that game, remember? Do you know what? Just before half time. Do you know what? My memory is normally <laughs> so good, right? But because we've had such a break... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems between, like... That's it. It seems like so long ago. It feels like you forget yeah. so much. So. But Socrates, I remember he banged a brilliant goal in that game, man. Just on the stroke of half-time, I think Wasn't it was. Wasn't that Portsmouth? Was it Portsmouth? Yeah, Socrates scored against Portsmouth. I should oh, remember. actually, you might be right. Yeah, because he gave me a shirt at the end of the game. Give it to my yeah, son. Here we go, his shirts again. Sorry. Bloody hell. Just saying. How many shirts you got, man? Bloody hell. Like 14. I've got a couple more Jeez. from the weekend as well. All right. Oh, I've got Sorry. a shirt. Sorry. Right. But yeah, you are. Yeah, actually, you're right. I think it was Portsmouth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we scored in. No, you know, we scored against Bournemouth, wasn't it? Again, it was the youngsters, weren't it? En Saka. And Ketia and Saka. En Saka banged yeah. that goal, innit? Right yeah, up yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Net. Portsmouth, um, I won actually at the game. Yeah. If you remember rightly, that was when my dad was ill. Yes. That and was I, right. I, I didn't actually go to the game. But I, yeah, I remember watching on TV and yeah, he banged that goal. Um, that was Socrates, wasn't it? Yeah, that's the one. Just on half time. Uh, yeah, that was the one Torreira got injured in as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how long ago that was, man. Right? That was literally just before lockdown. And then, yeah, then lockdown, and we had to wait all that time to then come back and play Sheffield United. Mm -hmm. And tough. Tough game. Tough. Tough game. Away from home. Remember they had, a, they had the ball in the back of the net earlier on in the game? Twice. Twice. Both disallowed. They were giving us a lot of problems. We scored, mm -hmm. right? They get one back right near the end. Yeah. From our poor defending again. Again. But then Danny Sobias. Yeah. And that, got seems the winner. To have, that seems to have been a turning point for Sobias. Yeah. Ever since that moment, he's kicked on. Yeah. Big win. Then semi final, Man City, we watched it here. Mm. Nobody gave us a prayer. Nah. Remember Goldbridge, his video? Oh! When the, when the draw came out, <laughs> Arsenal are out, they're out, they're out. That's it. That's How'd that it. work for you, Goldbridge? They're right. out, they're out, they're but out. But 2 0. Um, yeah, it was an unbelievable performance. It's just annoying that you can't be there and be mm. a part of it with the fans, um, with the fans, with the players, sorry. And um, yeah, that performance, that's our performance of the season mm. by a million miles, mm. that one, all day. And then um, we followed that up by losing to Aston Villa. 
<laughs> so, yeah, well, so. we are here now in the fight. That's actually, you know, when you, when you trace that, it's actually been quite a difficult because, you know, Leeds. Yeah, only one home game. Yeah. You know, only one home game. Only one that, home game, And then yeah. that was the side that's dominated the championship and are now mm. in the Premier League. Um, Bournemouth away, I suppose you could say, given their season. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah not but too still, bad. when it would have been drawn out at the time, you're not looking at it and thinking that's a walkover. It's no, Bournemouth, no, it's a decent but, team. You know, Portsmouth, Portsmouth tough place yeah, to go. Tough no, place tough, to go, you'd expect place, to win that. You'd expect to win, but given but, the changes that we're going to make for the yeah. day. You know, tough place to go. Yeah, Sell Sheffield out. United away. Sheffield United, tough. tough. Man City, tough. Yeah. So we've, got, we, we've done the hard route and it is exactly the same way like how in 2017 yep. when we won it, when we had to play City in the semi-final, no one gave us a prayer and in mm. Chelsea in the final, no one gave us a prayer in that game and we won it. Yep. Can we do it again? Of course we can. There's no reason why we How are we going to do it? We have to defend in the same manner that we did against Man City and not like we did against Watford. We do that then we stand a chance because our firepower can kill any team mm. and we have got the strikers that can you know put the ball in the net um chelsea's defense can be got at just as ours can mm. so you know it could be a high scoring game you say you say like similar to the city game but i don't i don't know i think it's gonna be a different type of game because I, no i know they're what? not gonna be like i mean listen they the way Chelsea play, they are a possession-based team mm -hmm. as well. But they're not a possession-based team like City, where they're going to have, like, literally 75, 80% I, of the possession. No, I, know what you're, I know what you're saying in that respect, but what I mean is defending as a, as a unit mm -hmm. at key moments. Chelsea's biggest threat we should know all about. Giroud. Giroud, because he's in goal-scoring form. And um, you've got Pulisic to worry about. Mm. And um, I think that if we defend as a unit, that's the thing, not defend in terms of how deep we were and with the counter and everything else. I mean, in terms of putting everything on the line. There are going to be moments in the game where you're going to have to throw your body in front of the ball mm. and you're going to have to have a bit of luck as well. Because the Man City game, there was a few moments where the ball kind of pinged around the box and it fell in the right place. So you need that bit of luck along the way. And then the other times, we literally defended for our lives through bodies in front of the ball. And that's what we need in terms mm. of a defensive unit. In, in that defence, obviously, in that game, Mustafi played. He played really well that game. Yeah. Um, also very good in the air and stuff like that. Obviously, he's out now. He's not going to be back until October. Mm -hmm. Who do you bring in instead of him? It has to be Rob Holden. He's the only one. What's, what's Socrates done? Well, he been getting, I know he hasn't. He hasn't had a shout, has he? I mean, no, he, he's, he's not been involved at all since lockdown, so you're not going to just randomly bring him in in the final. It's very evident that he doesn't suit what Mikel Arteta wants. Rob Holding's the one that's been coming in and playing when needed. Mm. We need a performance from him like he had against Liverpool, mm. for example, the week before Man City, where he dealt with the likes of Saido Mane and Liverpool's front three is more dangerous than any other front three in the Premier League in European football. Mm. So it's that Rob Holding we need to see. And the last time we played Chelsea in a final, he's yep. one of the man of the matches. I mean, Mertesacker, Saka, I remember, he put, he put in a great performance. Same Saturday. thing, we had injuries. Mm. Uh, Mustafi got injured for the final. This is his second final that mm. he's had to miss. Because she only got sent off the final Premier League game of the season before the final, so he had to miss it. And between him and Mertesacker, they put Diego Costa in their pocket. And Chelsea, mm. you've got to remember, they were a better Chelsea side then than they are now. They were the champions, they were going for the double. And everyone didn't give us a prayer before the game. Mm. I remember being here. Do you remember walking up Wembley Way? Mm. And Chelsea fans, when we were doing BBC interviews. Yeah, yeah. And Chelsea fans are like, oh, what are you coming here for? A day out? <laughs> Where were you at the end of the game? I didn't see you anywhere, did you? Okay. <laughs> So well, we're going to need we're going to need a bit more of that, and then those actively. defenders are going to have to play. You think he's definitely going to stick with a three? He, I, he, he went with a four at the back against um, Villa. Uh, 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 sorry, against um, against Watford. Watford. And look how poor we were. Yeah. Because there's a reason why he's moved to a three because he hasn't got the players that can play the four. So he thought, you know what? Last game of the season, not really much riding on it. Let me just give it a little try. Yeah, he gave it a try. Don't, because we ain't got the players that can do it. If we get his players in, we can do it and we can play the 4-3-3 that he would want mm. to play or 
a 4-2-3-1 maybe on certain games which he used when he first came in. And people got to remember that before lockdown, those were the formations that he was trying with four at the back and it wasn't working. So he's gone with something that has predominantly been working. I feel that the only time a three at the back probably won't work is when you're playing against some of the lesser sides, yeah. like an Aston Villa, for example. You can be a bit more expansive. Mm. But then, same thing when we played Watford. We just looked so shaky, yeah. so on edge. Yeah, I think definitely you'll go with that three. Mm. Do you reckon Ainsley will be that? You know, but, um, I've got him because in my starting he, 11. Yeah, because he went with, in, in that game against City, obviously he went with Tierney mm-hmm. as that sort of left-sided in the three. Mm-hmm. Then, as the wing-backs sort of, you know, dropping back in, was Ainsley, which was a big surprise to everybody it on was, the day. But, but defensively, he's better than Saka. You know, and what I will say is that, let's look at Chelsea's right-hand side. You know, who have they got in the attacking sense down that right-hand side? You know, who's their right right winger? Is it Pulisic is on mm. the left-hand side? Yeah, it could be William. It could be William. <laughs> He's a decent... Um, who they got down there, and that's a very good player. Could be his last game for Chelsea. Could be. Could you be know? with us next year. Could be with us next year. <laughs> Would you like that? Don't get me started. <laughs> um, but what I will say is that... Depending on who Chelsea have, I do think that we may well stick with Maitland-Niles there because mm. I think that he does offer us something and in, and in the Man City game he offered us a hell of a lot going forward it was just his final delivery that let him down yeah and you know if he can do that again going up against whoever Chelsea have on that right right hand side whether it's Asper Lequeta or Rhys James or whoever it might be he can give him a tough time mm. you know he gave Carl Walker a tough time and it, there's so many interesting matchups. I think our team is pretty simple to pick yeah. for this one. I think it's going to be pretty yeah. straightforward. This, this, this is a massive game for David Luiz, right? Huge. Because he's going up against Chelsea, so he'll be pumped. Yep. The first game he played against Chelsea, he was horrific, right, in that game. And he was sent off, wasn't he? He was sent off. Well, I still yeah. think he had a right, right to go for the ball. No, we'll argue about it. No, I told you that. Long. You know what that one reminded me of? It was exactly the same as what he did the other day against um, Watford. Yeah, yeah, but. The it, player's gone. Just let him score. I know what you're saying, but. Right, he did a say He still ain't learning. He still did the same thing again. Brought down the man, gave away a penalty. Sometimes what, yeah. you just got to say, you know what? But what I'm saying He's the, gone. The, the Chelsea one, he had every right to try and get the ball because he was put in that situation by Mustafi. And by the letter of the new law, he should never have been sent off because he made a genuine well, attempt to try and win the ball. And he now holds the, the record of being sent off the most times any individual in the Premier League, right? And in this game no, against... No, giveaway penalties. Yeah, sorry, giveaway penalties. Mm. He pro- I'd like to see if he's near that sending off record as well. He's probably near that as well. Yeah, probably. This is a huge game for him. It's he's going to have to turn up, isn't he? It, he's definitely going to have to turn up. And, and he's um, going to be up against Giroud. Yeah. And, he and we would, know that Giroud, we, we know from when Giroud is at Arsenal, he's good at bullying up defenders, well, you've got to remember, backing in. David Luiz spent a year with him. Yeah. He spent a year with him, so he would have trained against him. He spent a year with all the rest of the Chelsea players. He still was horrific in the two games we played against him. He spent more than a year I, with some of them. I know that, but what I'm saying is, is that the first time we played Chelsea this season, I still don't know how we lost the game. There were some dodgy decisions in that game. Well, there was definitely a dodgy decision not to send someone off, mm. was first and foremost. And but then remember Leno, Leno made an characteristic yeah. error. And then we was very naive and got caught up the other end of the pitch and we mm. let Tammy Abrahams of all players score. My mm. word. I say, you know, it's a bad day. Um, and then the second one, going down to 10 men and the way we played with 10 men at Stamford Bridge mm. was encouraging. Um, it's set up for such a good final, man. It is because it's hard to call. And as I said, there's not a lot to call in the two games that we've played mm. um, against them this season. I mean, even though they won one, one of them was drawn, but how, it was such close encounters, both many, of them. How many FA Cup finals have we played against each other? Oof. I think it's our third one in recent times, isn't mm. it? We've won the previous two. Yeah. Cardiff, 2017. They say it comes in threes. I hope you're right, man. I hope so you're right. I hope you are. It's, I think this is very different to last year in Baku. 
Um, Why? Because I think Chelsea had already secured Champions League football. I think Which they, they say were, they've done that this year as well. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that they were very relaxed for the game. Very just kind of, our job's done. Let's just go and enjoy ourselves. Where we had to win that game for Champions League football, everything rode on that game for us. But it's and a we similar, went, isn't it? No, but you say that, but... Europa League, if we don't get in the Europa League, we have to win this game. It's not in comparison to a Champions League. It's not, but for the owners and the hierarchy at the club, they've already said that but I still don't it think would be a big deal getting also, into the Europa we League. we have just said as well, they, they've also said that if we don't get into it, nothing changes. The plans don't change. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm, I'll listen to what my manager's saying. He ain't done nothing to say why you shouldn't trust him. I, I love what he's done this season. I love that. It'll be the same. Nothing's going to change if All we right. don't get into the Europa League. All right. We'll see. No, I don't know, man. I, I've we'll heard see. this before. We'll see. I just think that... He's not going to come out and say, you know what, if we no, don't... No, no, no. If but, we, he's, but he's um, also just not Just to let the fans know, no. if we don't get into the uh, Europa League, spending will be reduced by but 70%. But he's not also going to turn around... say that, is he? But he's also not going to turn around and say to the fans directly believe what I'm telling you. He actually said, trust me, listen to what I'm telling you. He's putting himself on the line by saying that. Okay. He's not just saying... Doesn't matter that we're not going to get in the Europa League because we weren't going to spend much money in the first place. Yeah, but what I'm saying, <laughs> but you get what I mean though? It's he's, more, probably he's more than He's genuinely putting his neck on the line. Mm. He is, he is putting his neck on the line and I like that about him. And it's a big game for him. That's huge Because, game. you know, him and Lampard, the two of them have a chance of winning their first trophy in football management and you know what that's a that's a big thing because you know you've got managers they've been managing for years they ain't won a thing yeah if both of these guys in their first season in a major job or i know lampard was at derby lampard's they got they got they got a chance yeah, of look, you know getting Lamp landing. Lampard, lampard's done all right he took derby from fourth to fourth and he's taken <laughs> chelsea from third to fourth so he's doing okay He's doing all right. Come on, man. He's done well, well this season. Listen. Because remember, they had a the transfer ban uh, and all that. Who cares? It's about time they got a transfer ban. The amount, they should be the ones in Man City's place. The amount of shit they've been up to over the years. Yeah, but he's had a good season, hasn't he? It's all right. What do, I had this discussion with you the other day. Anyone below the top two have had a poor season. No, but he's had a good no. season. They had a transfer Robbie. ban. Robbie, I don't care. I don't care. think they even bought... A, they only bought one player. Robbie, I actually don't but, care. I don't care if you finished outside of the top two... Even Man City, you can say, have had a poor season. But yeah, they've they still have. Got, but they've still got Champions League. That no, but you know why he, no, but you know why he's had but, a good season? Because nobody expected Chelsea to finish in the top four. At the same, they, they said, oh, transfer but then, ban, but then you Lampard's say come in, they ain't been able to bring players in. Nobody was expecting them to finish in the top you, four. But then you say that. I don't think anyone expected everyone to be so shit. Because everyone was. Robbie, listen, the only t there's two teams outside of the top two that can hold their head up this season. Sheffield United Wolves. The two sides. Not Leicester. No. Completely crumbled. Bottled it. Why should they get away with it? They were bottling it before lockdown. True, no. but no one expected them to get in fifth they, place. Listen, before they? lockdown, they were 14 points clear of Manchester United. Bottled it. Why should they get away with it? Oh, it's Leicester. What a lovely club. Oh, they have clappers on their seats. Oh, fuck off, man. <laughs> they bottled it. They bottled it. We bottled it. Everyone. Absolute dreadful season. Do not try and tell me that you've had a great Premier League season. Yeah, you got into the top four. Well done. You're celebrating something you mocked Arsenal about every year. Well done. Hypocrite. All right. But, as I said, there's a chance for him to win a trophy. Yeah, it's a chance for him right. to win a trophy. Chance for Arteta to win a trophy. Yeah. It would be bigger for Arteta because he's only been in the job five minutes, shall we say. And everyone keeps mocking him. Oh, I think it's he, big he, for he, both of them. He's Pep's man. I think it's big for both of them because I think either of them winning it, it's that thing that sets you going. That's it. It's a it lift. Can be. You know, you look on it, you say lift off, innit? It can be. The thing is with us is that everything kind of replicates Arsenal in the early 80s for us mm. right now. We went for a period after the FA Cup in 79 when we beat Manchester United and we went through a period where things weren't really mm. going to plan. And then, you know, George Graham took over. We had a first final in 87 against Liverpool. Charlie Nicholas final, Ian Rush scores first, no mm. one wins. We won that 2-1. And then it led us into a couple of years of progression. Anfield 89, the title in 91, European trophy in 93, 94, and the league and 
the domestic double over Sheffield Wednesday before we had that one bad period with mm. Bruce Rio, mm. shall we say, that kind of stopgap. He's a new Emery. That's what mm. I replicated to. And then Arsene Wenger. And the first 10 years of Arsene Wenger, he was just an absolute god. Despite what people might want to think about me and banners or this, that and the other, it was never like that. If you would have told me at White Hart Lane in 2004 when we're celebrating winning the league title there, that in 10 years you'll be waving banners or whatever, I would laugh. Somebody, sh- somebody showed me um, a video the other day of you. I think it was two seasons after that, having a, go- have a pop-up Wenger. I'm going to pop at Wenger. Yeah. Two, shut up, Rob. <laughs> about two seasons after. You dickhead. You're such a fool. About, I'm sitting there trying to go, oh, sit, what? <laughs> Get out of it, man. You You was getting nervous, in it? Because all these videos were getting digged up recently. Hey, you listen, thinking, oh, you, maybe there listen, is one. You can dig them videos up, man. I like the way that people dig up videos of me from about three years ago and try and claim it was like three months ago. It's like, come on, man. We all uh, say things. At, at the but, end of the day, but, listen, but, that... It is, it's, it's, it's huge. It's, it's, I hear what you're saying. It's reminiscent to me because we've, we've, got, we've come out of the Arsene Wenger era, which is similar to a George Graham era in terms of where it was so successful Success. at the beginning and then it all faded out. And yes, George Graham left the way that he did and don't compare mm. it to Arsene Wenger. But the way they left was not the way either of them would have liked, mm. shall we say. Then you had that bit in the middle, Bruce Rioch, Unai Emery, where people are questioning. Mm. Bruce Rioch was trying to get rid of Ian Wright for McGinley, was it, or something. Mm. Mm. That's like playing Lucas Torreira in a 10 instead of Mesut Ozil <laughs> at the time and stuff. There were things going on that were making you go, what? And then ultimately, he was the one that got us to that final in Baku and we mm. were absolutely humiliated. And that final six weeks of the season was down to Unai Emery. Crystal Palace at home was the start of it, where he was like, oh, you know what, it's mm. only Crystal Palace, fine. Let's play Cole Jenkins and right back and all that. Nah. So, and then after, you know, that period, you know, became um, the Arsene Wenger period. And we're hoping that this Mikel Arteta is that Arsene Wenger period. How important is it that he does win it? You know what I mean? Because, you know, Um, all right, maybe, you know, things like attracting players and stuff like that. Does it... Does it push his stock up and the club's stock up if we win a trophy? Possibly, yeah, because, you know, he's done it in such a short space of time with crap. Let's be real about it. We've got a lot of crap in the team. We've had a big break because of coronavirus. He's had coronavirus himself. Yeah. Um, So, I think it will be important for him. I think it's more important for him than Lampard. Because... Lampard's got a couple of years behind him in a managerial sense. He's also already got big backing from his owners for next season. We're already hearing about Kai Havertz. We know about um, Werner. We know about um, Zayic. Mm. Um, There was even talk about Oblak. My God, if they got him, then I would be fuming because he's right up there as one of the best keepers. It's better than Rex from Toy Story that's in goal now. I mean, with dinosaur hands. Kepa, you know I mean? you're the man. Kepa, do you know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, yes, yeah, they're building for what they want to do and they're going to mm. be challenging a lot quicker than what we are. We're going to take a good few years. We're going to have to try and emulate a Liverpool mould, shall we say, where it takes mm. four or five years. Whereas Chelsea, the way they're going, they can challenge Liverpool and Man City within the next one or two. Mm given the names that they've got in. And they've got to hit the ground running as well and they've got to work. Because, you know, it doesn't matter what you do in another league or anything else, you've got to be able to produce in the Premier League. And some people find out that it's not as easy as you might think. It's a completely different level. So, yeah, the way they're going, I think Lampard's getting the back in and he will win one sooner or later. But I think with Arteta, Mm. because it's not had a full season, he's taken over from Emery and such a fractured dressing room and so many problems and unwanted players and everything else. I feel in that sense, it would be massive him and a bigger achievement for him as well. Are you confident? Um, I'm never confident. I'm, I'm kind of confident in terms of bantering people sometimes. It's all fun and games. <laughs> it's all part and parcel of football, isn't it? It's nice, but it's not when the videos come back and bite you in the backside. But... Um, I just feel that if we, we attack right and defend right, 
we've got well more than enough to beat I, I, I think in this game, right, it's, again, it's concentration. Yeah. And David Luiz has to concentrate the whole game. Yeah. So does Holding. Those two players there, they can be brilliant. They can also be very worrying for me. Yeah. Because they tend to have these little moments when they switch off. Mm. And Chelsea are a very good side. Mm. Very good side. They've got a lot of good attacking players. You know, Giroud's on form, like you said. Pulisic, Kovacic. You know, they've, they're a good team, man. I mean, they absolutely destroyed Man United in the semi-final. Mm. <clears throat> and remember, everybody was talking up Manchester United before that game. And I think as well, you know, it was that overconfidence of Manchester United because they destroyed a lot of other teams leading up to that game. But they hadn't played a team of the calibre of Chelsea. Mm. And I'm hoping that Arsenal, they're not too overconfident as well, thinking to themselves, oh, we beat City, we beat we Liverpool, be. it's Chelsea, we should be able to... I want them to go into, the, into that game with the same level of concentration and the same level of focus as what they had when they played Man City and Liverpool. Because mm. you could see a difference in those games. Yeah, you could. And right from the, you know, I mean, I remember the game, I think it was the City game, or the Liverpool game, we made a load of mistakes at the start. Mm -hmm. But you could see there was a focus. Yeah, massive. On, especially on, the, you looked at Louise, Mustafi, they were focused. Yeah, massive. They're, they're, I want to see that in that game, because if they drop the level at all against Chelsea, we won't win. No, I know that. The one thing I will say is that if you look at, the Man City game, it was a few days after Liverpool. We mm. could have gone into that Man City game going, you know what, we're just beating Liverpool. They're better than Man City. Yeah, you know what, we'll be all right. Mm. But they didn't. Totally, totally different game. Yep. And they went and dealt with it. I, I so swear, our, I, I don't swear think, Arteta's going to be important. Exactly. I don't think Mikel will let them have that mindset. Mm. I really don't. It's very, very important that they don't. Because if 